Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with some more Chicalia Lost. Today, I'm going to do what I promised in the last video, which was I'm going to just start reading some dragon stories. As you can see here, also I've passed the 60,000 mark in Warmite. So yeah, today's video is going to be just me reading some dragon tales. And the video is called Dragon Tales. Dragalia Tales. Um, totally original idea. So let's see. We're going to go into the dragons. That's today's video. That's all what today's video is going to be. I hope you like it. If you do, remember to leave a like. Comment if you have a very specific dragon story that you like a whole bunch. And we'll get right into it. So let's see what we got. Let me see. Be a good person to start off with. Well, it should be someone I can actually pronounce the name of. <laughs> I was going to go with this one, but... Uh, it doesn't work for me. Let's see. Uh, sure, let's go with Pazuzu. I'm actually kind of curious what they would do with Pazuzu, considering that he's supposed to be a devil person. A Disastrous Life, Part 1. Alright, starting good. Pazuzu, a dragon of storms and disasters, a mere flap of his wings is all it takes to summon great winds, while his roar spreads a poisonous miasma far and wide. One day he arrived on a plane, seeking to make a home there, but the moment he did so, the clear air grew toxic and fierce storms became a daily occurrence. The people who abided nearby could handle occasional calamities, but not daily ones, <laughs> just like actual people. They decided they could no longer live there, and so left their homeland behind. The only one who remained were the sick, the old, and their families. Wow. And while they could not leave their home, they swore to do all they could to rebuild after each disaster. Pazuzu found these remaining residents both weak and stubborn, and decided to pay them no mind. Wow, Pazuzu is kind of a dick. He did not intentionally interfere with their lives, but, but nor did he assist them in any way. Yet whether he wished it or not, every movement brought calamity upon them. Every flap of his wings caused great winds bringing down their homes and filling their rivers with poison. But no matter how many times the fields and homes were ruined, they simply lowered their heads and went about the process of rebuilding. Again and again, they rebuilt their homes and even built stone waterways and underground, underground to avoid the poison. Pazuzu could not help but be impressed by their uh, refusal to give up. While he had no intention of becoming friendly, he found his curiosity could not be quelled. No matter how many disasters fell upon them, the humans held out. They were living at the edge of a precipice, yet refusing to fall. In this way, several years passed. One day, Pazuzu saw dark swirling clouds on the other side of the plain, and he knew instantly that a trial far greater than any dragon was fast approaching. Ooh. Hmm. So Pazuzu seems like a dick, but the kind of dick that's like... I mean, it's not his fault, I guess, that he is just trying to live, I suppose. <laughs> I can't really blame a guy for trying to live his life. Uh, disastrous Life Part 2 After moving to a new home, Pazuzu, the dragon of disaster, subjugated it to fierce winds and deadly poison. Despite this, many people chose to remain there and live on. But a new trial was upon them, a vast tornado that came every century, carrying disease and bringing utter ruination to all, the tyrannical tornado, which sounds like a lemony snicket book, now that I see it. Everyone looked, so, everyone looked up powerlessly as the dark clouds on the horizon. They had resisted disaster until then, but knew that they would soon meet their untimely end. Ultimate end. The tyrannical tornado swallowed up the plains in an instant and the rest of the continent shortly after. All the while, Pazuzu watched silently from the safety of the upper skies. Succumbing to panic, many a town, man and woman, uh, fell, t fell to the great tornado. Among these was a town built by the former plain residents, those who were left, of fe f left for fear of Pazuzu. After several days, the winds calmed, but just as the survivors were feeling relieved, diseases began to spread on the breeze and the countless people met a grisly end. The people resigned themselves to their fate and prostrated themselves before the great disaster. There was nowhere, to there was nowhere for weak humans like them to flee now. As he watched, Pazuzu found himself wondering about the town built on his plane, the one filled with humans who refused to give up their lives. Ah, uh, but it was a town of people by, uh, peopled by the poor and infirm. Those too weak to leave, he knew it could not still be standing, 
and the thought filled his heart with loneliness. But when he returned to where the town had stood, he was startled, for the town and its people were completely unharmed. He recalled how they built homes that withstood storms and channels. They resisted poisons. How they had rebuilt the town over and over, no matter how sick they became. At first, they were too weak to even flee, and yet, oop, and yet, my capture completely fizzled out on me. And yet, by struggling in earnest to live another day, they had gained the strength to withstand both plague and wind. The strong had perished, while the weak obtained true strength. Though that very trait, thinking on this. Um, Pazuzu marveled at just how resilient these humans could be. As the people rejoiced at their safety, they heard the sound of a peculiar wind, one identical, that, one identical to that which always tormented them, and yet one now tinged with joy. Disaster is not to be avoided. Instead, one must live alongside it. For those who live hand-to-hand -hand with disaster can never be destroyed. Jesus fucking Christ. Um... Wow, I accidentally picked the one story that's actually relevant to today. <laughs> Who would have guessed it? Um, Alright, let's see. Another good dragon. Uh, hmm. We need a... Hmm. I feel like I need a pick-me-up of that one. Cupid should be pretty good. We'll do Pazuzu and Cupid. There's no way Cupid can be super sad and depressing, right? First love, part one. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> there were two things Cupid adored more than anything, happiness and love itself. That was why he did all he could to help the romances of others flourish and grow. One day, he, could, he would help someone look for a soulmate. The next, he would bring two people together. Helping others realize their love made them happy, and him, too. One day, Cupid met a cute girl and instantly knew that he wanted to make her happy. This is very unfortunate because the girl was underage, so Cupid went straight to jail. Uh, but while the girl's eyes shone as she told him of her dreams in the future, she'd actually never been in love. I want to grow up to be a fine lady, she said, and fall in love with an amazing man. He'll return my love as he gazes into my eyes, and we will live in content contentment forever. That's what I want. Oh wow, said a smiling <laughs> Cupid. That sounds like a really happy life. He made a promise to her that when the day came, he would help her dreams come true. Finally, after several long years, the day the girl had awaited finally arrived. During that time, she had grown into a beautiful and fair-minded woman. Despite being a commoner, she was so popular even the richest nobles were asking for her hand. So who would be who so who would such a popular young lady choose to be her partner? In the end, she chose an unassuming young gardener. She told Cupid how madly in love she was, and that this young man was the one for her. But Cupid was less than impressed. Ordinarily, any romance was enough to fill him with excitement, but this one did not, and he had no idea why this was the case. I'm sure there's someone out there more fitting for you, he told the girl. A simple gardener can't possibly make you happy, not like... Cupid caught himself before he could finish speaking and was stunned by the realization of what he was about to say. Dun dun dun. The dragon has fallen in love with the woman. I bet that's where this goes. Right, Cotton? As you bark like an idiot over at me? First love, part two. The girl who Cupid met had grown into a fine young woman and had fallen in love with the first for the first time. The object of her affection was a gardener, which left Cupid feeling rather gloomy. Cupid tried to change her mind. I'm sure there's someone out there more fitting for you, he told the Jesus. He does not like the love story. Oh, that's because there's a police helicopter going around. One moment! Alright, the helicopter pass, I think. Let's get back to the love story. A simple gardener can't do, can't make you happy, not like. He stopped short, for he knew he was about to nominate himself in place of the gardener, and the thought filled his heart with despair. He knew well the couple was a perfect match that they were deeply in love and meant for one another. He had known that since the day he first saw them together. So this is another kind of love, he thought. It's so painful. Cupid had been in love, the theory of love, but did not know what it was in truth, and even and how it actually felt. Even now how it actually felt. And while the pain in his heart didn't fill him with happiness, he still wished for the girl's life to be filled with joy. 
Even if he wasn't the one to make her happy, he still wanted her to have a long and fulfilling life. But what he had never realized until that moment was that the sadness he now felt was also of a form of love. Finally, he went to the girl and said, I will give you all the love I can, so you can be the with the- Wow. Uh, so you can be with the man you love for the rest of your lives. Hearing that, she ran back to the gardener and took his hand in hers. The life she had been long dreamed of had finally arrived. And so the pair received Cupid's blessing and lived happily ever after, or so the story goes. As for Cupid, he redoubled his efforts to spread the joy of love to all. This experience taught him that love comes in many forms, both happy and sad. However, this only caused him to adore it all the more. My soulmate is love itself, he cried. That's why I am able to stay in love with it even after going through such terrible sadness. How fortunate I am! And so, powered by his mutual love, Cupid continues to spend his days sharing the love with others so that they can be happy too. Alright, that ended up being happier than I thought. Um, there you go. That's two stories. And that's, I'm gonna say... Uh, oh, you know what? I should end it with... Hmm. Actually, no. We'll keep it for this right now. If you end up liking this, if you want more of this, please tell me. I would love to keep doing this. Maybe once a week. You know, just read a dragon story and and then eventually get to adventures as well. And then also castle stories. Like I said, I I have the ability to do these all. I just never did. But that's the end of today's episode. I hope you liked it. And remember, everyone, love is in the air and disasters everywhere. <laughs>